Hello everybody, I'm Dave. Welcome back to Sailing Madness. Now as you can see, I've got another little upgrade to show you today. What are these blue containers that I've been bringing on the boat? Well, if you've not worked it out already, it's a watermaker system. What's a watermaker? Well, a watermaker simply converts undrinkable salty seawater into fresh, clean drinking water. And it does that through a system called reverse osmosis. Now, I don't know the full physics of how that works, and I'm not going to go into that in this video because it's well above my intelligence level. But basically, this system pumps seawater at high pressure through some very fine filters, and what comes out the other end is clean, fresh drinking water. That's basically all you need to know. But what you do need to know is that there's two different types of water maker system. You can either buy a portable version like I've bought here, or you can buy an installed version. Now an installed version is one that you basically fit inside your boat and it becomes a permanent fixture of the vessel. And to do that, you've got to run cables and wires and hoses through all sorts of places on your boat. And I just don't think I've got the space on here to do a proper install. So I went for the portable version. And I think the other advantage of a portable version is that if at some point in the future I do decide to sell the boat I can take the water maker with me and also if I'm at an anchorage somewhere and a boat around me is desperate for water then I can lend them my system you can't do that if it's installed on your boat at least I can put this in the dinghy and take it over to another vessel and we can then fill their tanks now when it comes to portable water makers you do have a couple of options as well I've gone for the 230 volt AC version because these ones produce water a lot quicker and it was a no-brainer for me because I do have have a generator in one of the cockpit lockers so basically when I want to make water all I've got to do is get the generator out plug this into the generator put the hoses over the side and away I go. You can buy 12 volt versions but they tend to be a lot slower they're nowhere near as powerful and they'll take an awful lot longer to fill your tanks and probably drain your batteries on your boat in the meantime. So that's the first upgrade that I want to show you today. Um, I am planning on going to Scotland now in the next couple of days just waiting for a weather window looks like that could be happening uh, at the early start of next week so when I go to Scotland I'm going to be playing with a water maker. Now I don't need a water maker to go to Scotland um, but in the future when I do do longer passages and hopefully when I'm crossing oceans to have a water maker on board is a very prudent safety feature to have on your boat. Right, so now that's the water maker explained. Here is upgrade number two. And it's big and shiny, this one. Basically, I bought two brand new winches. And now, luckily enough, on this boat, there's moldings for four, for four winches. Now I've already got two winches obviously for the uh, for the main sheets for the uh, Genoa but to have a couple of spare winches closer to the helm station is going to be a bit of an advantage for me especially when I'm single-handing. So my job this morning is to get these two screwed into their relevant positions in the cockpit. Right so it's pretty cramped working in these conditions but this is the area where the winches go one on the port side, one on the starboard side. It's just a question of marking holes and drilling away. You do have to get the winch in the right position. But, uh, I need to read the instructions to make sure I get that right. Worst part of any job, drilling holes in your boat. Now I've already checked in the locker that there's no wires from the uh, autopilot coming across here. The pilot, the autopilot wires go straight down. So let's start drilling.
Right, okay, so that's the, the port side one done. Just the one on the starboard side and this little upgrade is done. Right, okay, I'm back on the boat. It's been a couple of days since I installed the winches and I found a home for the water maker in the lockers. So we are all systems go now for our little trip to Scotland. So I've been doing a little bit of provisioning. Now the challenge is to find a home for all this stuff that I've been buying in the supermarket. So my provisioning plan has always been to stock up as much as I can on tinned produce because this is fairly bulky and heavy um, and carry as much of that as I possibly can hopefully enough to last me the whole trip. So when we're away what I only want to be doing is reprovisioning with fresh stuff. So I'm talking about bread, I'm talking about milk, I'm talking about fresh meat. Um, all the tinned stuff hopefully is going to last me from the time we leave to the time we get back. Uh, and I'm doing that because typically a good supermarket is normally a bit of a hike away from wherever it is that you've moored up. So to lug a whole load of tin stuff is going to be quite heavy going. If I just go to the supermarket or a local convenience store just to get bread and milk and maybe some fresh meat, then that's going to save not only a lot of time, but an awful lot of effort. And one of the other things we're going to try and do is before I go is get rid of as much packaging as I possibly can so that way we don't accumulate so much plastic waste and rubbish when we're at sea. Now as a boat owner have you ever been to a caravan and camping show? Probably not. I'm sure you've been to a boat show in the past and boat shows are great for boats and boat bits but what you get at a caravan and camping show that you don't get at a boat show is all sorts of other stuff that is relevant to both camping and boating and I went to a caravan and camping show last year with my brother-in-law and my sister and I picked up some of these and I'm not sure if I've showed you these before. Now if you want to reduce the amount of plastic that you carry on your boat when you've done some provisioning like for instance this packet of cheese it's a plastic wrapper uh, of course once you open it once you consume the cheese you've then got to dispose of the plastic and if you're on a long crossing you've got to store this until you get to the other end but what these are are very handy fridge storage devices I'm not sure what their technical name is but these are basically reusable storage containers for things like cheese and for sliced meat and you put it in here you you close the lid over this kind of plastic film on the top forms like an airtight container and so your produce lasts a lot longer so what I'm going to do is take the cheese out of the supermarket wrapping and I'm just going to put it in one of these and that means I can throw this plastic away before we leave. That's just going to go in there. I'll just spread them out a little bit. So just spread them around a little bit like so. So there you go. And then you just put this over the top, force that down nice and tight. And there is like a, an airtight container now that can go in the fridge. And then that can go in the bin. And there's even bits on the floor for the dog to lick up. Now I bought these at a caravan and camping show and I said to the person selling these things on the stand have you ever been to a boat show and they said well no but I really think that uh, if you if you are a boater and you know for stuff like this you can't beat going to a caravan and camping show because you won't find these at a boat show so I highly recommend when there's one in your area go to a caravan and camping show. So as you can see there's lots of tins already stored down here in the bilge and I've also got a whole load more in the cupboard in there. So my plan is not to have to buy any tin stuff while I'm away. As I said earlier I only want to be buying the fresh stuff so I've just restocked on a few little bits and pieces and I think we are just about there ready to go. I think I've got enough food here to last me about six months. I've even got the dreaded horrible long life milk just in case we run out of fresh. Never intend on using that because I think it's horrible, especially in tea. God. Right, okay, so that's the provisioning done. And as you can see, I've got three bags here, two bags full of plastic, one bag full of cardboard packaging that I can now go and recycle in the marina. 
So that's three bags of rubbish that we don't have to take to Scotland with us. Now, talking to going to Scotland, uh, we are heading off tomorrow morning. I am going to be going with Robin again, who, if you watched the previous episodes of us sailing to Dublin and back, uh, he's the guy that came with me on that. So my new sailing buddy has joined me on a little trip to Scotland. We're going tomorrow and I'll show you what the plans are just as soon as I get rid of these in the bin. Right, OK, so that's the uh, recycling put in the bins up in the marina. So now let me just talk to you about what the sailing plans are for the uh, well for the next couple of weeks. Really don't know how long this is going to be, but let's wait and see what happens with the weather. So here we are in the UK, and if I just scroll in, zoom in, this is where we are right now at Conway Marina. So it's Sunday afternoon now. We have a weather window with some nice winds tomorrow. So we're going to be leaving Monday morning tomorrow, and we're going to be heading up towards the Isle of Man here. Now, whether we'll stop here or not, we don't know. Depends on how long it takes us to get there. But as you can see, I've already marked at least one anchorage. I know there's a couple of others around the, depending on which way the wind's blowing, but either on the, the west side of the island here or on the east side. So we'll either stop there or we'll keep going. If we keep going, we'll head further north and possibly head towards Stranra, which is this little blue sign here. So there's a marina there we could pull into or we could just anchor somewhere here on Loch Ryan and then after we've done that the plan is to cruise this area of the west coast of Scotland. Our first port in a call will be the Isle of Arran which is here and as you can see I've already marked a couple of possible anchorages and then after that we're going to head possibly up Loch Long which is this lock here. Um, there's a couple of anchorages that I've highlighted here um, and here and as you can see Loch Long is well it's a long lock so it goes right to the top here and there's a lovely little anchorage at the top of the lock and I'm told there's a nice pub here as well so that's the plan and then once we've done Loch Long I'll come back down and go around the Isle of Butte which is this island here around the top come down here and then I'll head up this lock here and then we'll see where we end up See how far we get to the top of uh, Upper Loch Fine or Finn Fine. I don't know. So that's the plan. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Robin is going to be with me. He's coming on the boat. He's going to be here tomorrow. Now, Robin only has until Friday and then he has to head back home. So for him to get home, he's going to need to get a train from Glasgow. So for the first part of our little trip, we'll be around the Isle of Arran and then probably with Robin, we'll head up Loch Long and then I should think. Probably by the time we've done that and come back down, dropped him off at maybe uh, Largs Marina here um, for him to get on a get in a taxi and get to the, the railway station in Glasgow. I think that's probably going to take us till Friday. And then after that, I'll be on my own. So who knows how long this is going to take. It all depends on the weather. It all depends on how much I'm enjoying it. I might decide to come home next week. I might decide to stay and go a little bit further and go right out to the other side of Tobermory and uh, up to the um, Outer Hebrides, which are these ones here. So we'll see. Who knows? Everything is up in the air at the moment. It all depends, as I said, on the weather and all depends on how well I'm enjoying it. Well, good morning, everybody. Our day of departure has arrived. We are heading to Scotland this morning. It's about eight o'clock in the morning right now. Uh, Robin will be here for about 10 and we'll be heading off for about 11 o'clock. As you can see, Jess is getting us off ready by having a little drink. So the three of us will be heading north very, very soon. Just one more little job I want to do before we depart, and that is I need to fill the water tanks. I think that's full. Right, that's the front one done. Now let's go and do the same on the back. Here he is, the crew member has arrived. I'm ready to go. Hey, hey let's go on this beautiful sunshiny day to the wonders of Scotland. Right, so we're on our way. We left about an hour and a half ago, was it maybe two hours? Yeah, an hour and a half, I think. So I didn't film the uh, the departure because you've seen that on the videos previously. So uh, it was perfect, obviously. Obviously, <laughs> and it was also a little bit wet. We got a little bit wet because it rained. You can probably still see the remnants of the rain behind us. 
Um, but uh, that's the Welsh coast we're leaving behind and we are pretty much heading more or less towards the Isle of Man. If not Lake Windermere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the plan is we're going to stay at um, the Isle of Man tonight and then make our way to Scotland in the morning. And currently we're doing four knots to four and a half knots in 15 knots of wind so we could be doing want to be making a bit more yet uh, because we're not going to get there till about one o'clock in the morning at this rate. It's definitely going to be dark when we get to the Isle of Man. So it looks like we're leaving the dark clouds behind us over there. That's North Wales. Then if I spin you around, it looks like clear blue skies where we're going. That looks good, doesn't it? Well, as you can probably hear, the engine is on. That's because the wind has died off. So the wind went down to about six knots and we're doing about two. That way we're never going to get there. So uh, put the engine on. So with the engine on very, very low revs, that's built the speed back up to about five knots now. So uh, that's going to get us in a lot, lot quicker. But it's still nice being out here. It's now about six o'clock so it's starting to get cold the sun's disappeared behind the clouds but it's been a good journey so far happy days okay so we've got uh, an interesting situation because uh, captain dave has decided to go down and make tea just at the moment when things have got interesting and i'll show you so i'll show you first on the uh, on the nav screen so on the nav there you can see us and you can see two other ships sort of above us there and also another ship on the left okay well the ship on the left is doing 13 knots we're doing just under five the one at the top is doing about 10 knots but the one at the top you can probably see when the camera looks a long way away they are going to pass each other those two ships um, and they're just passing each other now one in front of the other and the other one is coming at us at speed and I don't know if you can see him but he's right above that metal stanchion there now but he looks like he's a lot closer to me I can tell you so we'll do one or two things we'll either record another video when we're much closer or this may be the last you hear of us I'm not sure we'll see how we get on Okay, so you can see that we're now about halfway across uh, and we did hold our ground in this little triangle of ships here, which the law of the sea says all come together in the same place in the middle of nowhere just when you don't want them to. And here's what we've got. So there's the sea truck boat just going across he's doing 15 knots flying along and he's just passed behind the MSC container ship that we had out there as well maybe just behind them you can see the Isle of Man there's a container ship from now now right well we survived our little foursome we just had dinner and we have around 20 odd miles to go just doesn't seem like we're getting any closer but uh, still thoroughly enjoying it uh, lovely sort of sunset at the moment it's starting to set probably got another couple of hours of daylight left but uh, Wales is almost disappeared in the background now and we're still motor sailing because the winds have completely died well I say completely died we've got less than 10 knots of breeze and that's apparent and we're doing four knots through the water so some of that apparent wind will be us so not enough to sail on its own. So uh, we're motor sailing and we'll probably motor sail for the rest of the way. Good job I filled up with fuel before we left, wasn't it? Well, it's now 10 past 10 and we still have 10 miles to go. So we're gonna be a good hour before we get in. 
been a good crossing so far. I've enjoyed it. Let's just hope we can get in and find somewhere to anchor in the dark. It's always a bit nerve wracking going into a new marina or port for the first time, but doing it in the dark kind of adds to the pressure a little bit.